a real virtue is good in and of itself. Uh, it cannot be hijacked or abused. Good intention is built into them, so they transcend evil. They are ends in themselves and will always accord with the flow of nature. Uh, real virtues include things like faith in truth or God alone. Uh, hope that when you have faith in those things, uh, the end will be as it should. Love, uh, full acceptance of and gratitude for the outcome, no matter what. Um, but the one that I'm talking about today is moderation, self-authoritative moderation, and its contrast to discipline. So discipline is what I call a dark virtue. Uh, dark virtue is something that is not good in and of itself uh, because it can be hijacked by the human will and used for evil. Uh, love, for example, is not, uh, is not a dark virtue. It's a true virtue um, because if your love for someone has conditions, then it's not love. Love by its nature is unconditional. So it cannot be hijacked. Uh, if you have conditions for your love, you're not loving, you're using, right? Um, so dark virtues, on the other hand, uh, can be hijacked by the human will and used for evil. Uh, one can exercise these with any intention or motivation. Uh, they're mere behaviors, means to any end of our choosing. They can have the appearance of virtue when they are more deeply rooted in weakness or malice, especially when the behavior is being guided by another person's authority, not our own inner authority and our connection uh, to what is true and good that we're all born with. Um, there's never any good motivation in attempting to control the behavior of another, nor in submitting to another's authority. The dark virtues, uh, often mistaken for being good in and of themselves, are things like obedience and loyalty uh, to any moral authority that is not truth, God, or one's own honest conscience uh, that we possess, our intuitive truth uh, detecting antenna, right? That's intuition. Uh, discipline uh, and honor which is the one I'm going to be talking about in more depth today, which is contingent on conviction, uh, can be a forced replacement for self-regulation. Kindness is simply a behavior that can be rooted in any motivation, good or bad, or lack thereof. Propriety is simply a formality, um, and it can mask inauthenticity. It's uh, mainly just an adaptation device in order to maintain order even when it is not appropriate. Efficiency is a tool for rapidly achieving any end of our choosing, no matter how good or evil it is. So one must learn to cultivate these dark virtues, moderate them and intend them well. Uh, practiced unconsciously, one is expressing these in a way that, is, that simply accords with one's natural inclinations and abilities. Obviously, a person who is naturally high in personality trait conscientiousness uh, will be highly disciplined and likely also efficient. Um, but this is simply how they are, and it's not good or bad on its own. Uh, it's as morally neutral as anything else in nature. The same is the case for someone who is born with any strong talent or ability. Conscious intervention is required for that thing to serve the good. And this typically will involve moderation of that trait, talent, or ability. So on to the difference between moderation and discipline and why self-moderation or regulation, rather, uh, is a conscious evolved um, way of not taking things too far based on uh, 
one's knowledge of himself and one's own limits and uh, one's discipline to not uh, go beyond those limits. Um, discipline is, is another thing on its own, and it's not inherently a good thing uh, because, and it, that can be demonstrated in one fact, that's that Nazi soldiers, for example, were extremely disciplined and among the most disciplined of uh, any military force in recent history, All right? So they used it not for good, but for evil, uh, for to submit to false authority, All right? So where one cannot exercise moderation or self-regulation, one must replace it with discipline. Uh, of course, there is discipline in moderation, as I've said, uh, but there's not always moderation or regulation in discipline. Uh, one must be disciplined to refrain altogether where one knows one cannot be moderate. For that person who is capable of moderation, he can partake in anything. He's in tune with himself, uh, knows his limits and he abides by them. Addicts, for example, must be highly disciplined because they cannot self-regulate. Soldiers in the military are stripped of individual choice and are forced to be disciplined whether they were previously capable of moderation or not. You'll notice uh, that this has an adverse effect, especially because the reason that someone joins the military to begin with uh, naturally find it difficult to self-moderate. When soldiers are finally released for a weekend in which they can partake in alcohol consumption, for example, they will get excessively drunk. When they finally find an opportunity to have sex, they almost immediately fall in love and propose. <laughs> Discipline must be a free choice or else one will be made an infant of a man. One must first be able to moderate on his own for this, will, for this is the super superior virtue. Discipline is not a virtue, but rather a means to an end. Or better yet, a means to prevent an undesirable end. To be disciplined without the willingness or ability to self-moderate is to live in a state of fear of one's own doing. You're playing not to lose in life rather than to win and to take the risks necessary to uh, learn and to become better, sharpen your ability to self-regulate. Even when knowledge of good and evil is put aside, one may justify these behaviors, all the, the dark virtues, um, but discipline in particular, um, on the basis of empathy. To, reiter to reiterate from previous videos and uh, writings that I've done, empathy is... Um, simply a biological reaction to external stimuli, and therefore is no ground for justifying any action. Um, to act from empathy is to become a slave to one's nature, which, as previously mentioned, has no moral worth. Uh, it's just as true to say that acting destructively from anger is just as morally permissible. In fact, it could be argued that anger and empathy come from the same place. Impulse and are thus morally equivalent. Both the highly conscientious person and the highly empathetic person, although those come from two different personality dimensions, uh, are at great risk of mistaking dark virtues for real ones. The former, conscientious, is naturally disciplined, goal-oriented, and seeks to maintain order in their environment. Uh, they may attempt to control the behavior of others in order to achieve that end, uh, consciously or unconsciously, and they will develop a false sense of virtue by creating efficiency, which, as the Nazis demonstrated, again, can produce success of an immortal sort, immoral sort. <laughs> the empath, on the other hand, is naturally in tune, in tune and can mistake absorbing everything for understanding anything. They may subconsciously manipulate out of insecurity since they lack the inner groundedness to regulate themselves. 
and they will develop a false sense of virtue by seeking contexts which make them feel safe. Accurate understanding greatly benefits from impartial observation, something that the empath lacks the ability to do on its own without having cultivated uh, other traits, okay? This is why people on the autism spectrum who lack empathetic abilities, for example, have such good memory for factual information, space, and chronology. Uh, it's important to remember how efficient and disciplined um, the Nazis and any successful military regime in history were. If we equate efficiency with truth or goodness, discipline with truth or goodness, uh, we fall into a materialist framework for understanding uh, reality. Of course, we do not determine ultimate, ultimate ends for we ourselves have an end being in a mortal body, okay? Uh, what makes ends ultimate is that they exist independent of us, that their essence is not meant to serve us. What is true is true and what is good is good whether or not we exist at all. So that's just an excerpt of my forthcoming book uh, called Truth Exists, Meditations on Reality and Human Nature. And, uh, hope I got, uh, got across the difference between um, self-regulation or moderation and discipline and why the former is in fact a virtue that we can and must apply to everything that we're gifted with and why the latter discipline uh, is merely a product of one's nature, but also a skill that is meant to be cultivated and used for good consciously, because it is not embedded in discipline uh, that it is good or that it will be used for evil. It's simply a means of efficiency and achieving an end, but we don't get to choose uh, which ends are worth it. That's something that we have to discover by leading uh, a spiritual life. So uh, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.